Hey everyone and welcome to the program. I'll be talking about Pearl Jam's MTV Unplugged from Record Store Day Black Friday 2019. Stick around and we'll dive in. So if you're like me, you're a, a big fan obviously of, of vinyl and collecting. Uh, very likely go to Record Store Day or Record Store Day Black Friday all the time. Um, and, and obviously, um, you know, we, we pick them up, we listen to them, um, but we don't necessarily continue to talk about them after the fact. You know, there's a lot of videos out there that look at uh, what's coming or, or maybe just to show off the haul that you got, but, you know, not necessarily having a conversation about the overall quality and the experience and, you know, if this release satisfied what we were looking for. So we're a couple months past Black Friday. We're about two months away from the big Record Store Day 2020. So I thought now would be a good time to, to talk about this album and continue that conversation with you. So, you know, overall, I enjoyed this. I was happy to get a copy of this. Um, I was, you know, among the first five or six people in the door in, at my store. There were a lot of copies of this, but it obviously flew out the door. We know the horror stories. We, we've heard the, you know, people getting there and it's not there at all. Um, the shipments being delayed. Uh, they printed about 13,000 copies of this, which, you know, should make it relatively easy to get. Obviously, Pearl Jam's got a huge fan base, so that can play into it a, a bit. But there were, like, weeks later, um, stores were still getting their shipments into this and it's just it was just an insane debacle um it is a record store day exclusive release meaning that this is very unlikely to ever be rep repressed again but you never know um you know overall i like it um I, it's one of those I, I of course remember watching this on mtv when it aired back in 92 um and, and i enjoyed it um it doesn't rank with me in the same way as like let's say nirvana's mtv unplugged uh concert just resonated it, it was such a uh such a crucial show for them but it also aired um you know within that that period of time like right before uh kurt died and and it it's um you know i think it resonates in a different way and, and this was also Clearly, a promotion for their uh, album Ten. Um, whereas Nirvana, they were experimenting with things. They were doing their own songs. They bucked playing like "Smells Like Teen Spirit." They played David Bowie song. They played. Uh, they did you know music that wasn't necessarily theirs. They did quite a few covers that have become very well known. They did a Lead Belly song. So uh, it was just such a unique experience, you know, for two bands that were considered to be big rivals at the time coming out of Seattle. Um, but this is just, a, it's a great performance and it sounds great. Uh, one of the things that bothered me a lot, and, it, and I had to, you know, when I when I got it, and even when I was checking out the, the set list ahead of time, I'm like, it feels kind of short to me. Um, and I felt like there was more to it uh, at the time. And I went back and checked the set list. And it is a little bit different. They did leave a little bit out on this. And this wasn't a cheap release. It was, it was about 30 bucks. Um, maybe they wanted to keep it um, affordable. But I, I went back and checked the set list. And songs that were left off of here, they did do Rockin' in the Free World. Um, and then as an encore, they recorded Garden and, um, and Leash. Um, there's only seven songs on here. Um, they cut out a lot of the banter in between songs um, that Eddie was having, I guess, with the audience. I'm, it, it's been so long since I've seen it, but it was. There were comments. I know he he made a comment about um, Nirvana in in the show. Um, I don't recall exactly what he said offhand, but it, it things like that made it an interesting listen, and it would have been fun to get the complete performance. Uh, maybe some bonus tracks that you know didn't make the TV show would have been great to get rocking in the free world. Um, I, I'm assuming the big thing is they wanted to keep this to a single LP, keep costs down. You know, I think if they would have added in the extra songs, 
it probably would have pushed it to a three-sided situation where, you know, you've got side A, you got side B, you got side C, and then what do you do with side D? Um, so I, I can understand not wanting to put out a, a $40 um, live album in limited release. Uh, you know, if you're still looking for this one, if you haven't gotten it yet, it's still out there. I mean, it, it's there's a lot of copies available. I, I would try not to overpay for it. I think you can get this one at an affordable price um, through third-party sellers. I, I think over time it's going to go up. You know, it, you don't want to buy it. Like, if you miss out on Record Store Day or Black Friday, it's one of those where you don't want to just hit the panic button and go straight to eBay and pay 150 bucks for it because it the price is normalized. But, um, you know, over time, I could definitely see this one, um, you know, getting to a point where you're going to have to decide, do I or don't I? Um, I do wonder if Pearl Jam, based on the demand for this one, might say, yeah, maybe we do need to repress it again or maybe they do a full version and... Put it out with all the songs that were recorded during the session um and and you know that way you're kind of keeping this as an exclusive but you're doing something different um but of course that'll just irritate the fans anyway who are going to be like well now i gotta buy it twice so uh you know you're never gonna win as a as a fan um but it, it was a, it's a good listen you know it, it when i threw it on it just it felt like i was back in high school again um, so it, it, it was, it brought me back into that moment. It sounds great. It, it's such a memorable period in that band's, um, history, uh, you know, those early years. Um, so if you can get a copy of this, if you haven't, I, I would highly recommend it, you know, be, be vigilant and, and try to find one at a decent price. They're going to be out there. There's 13,000 copies of this. At, at some point, the flippers who are sitting on them are going to want to unload what what they're sitting on so you know have a little patience but if you can get a good copy for 50 or 60 bucks i, I don't think that's unreasonable um considering the popularity of the band what do you think um did you get this did, did you enjoy it did you have uh, were you disappointed in any sense you know similar to, to my experience where i just had wished they had put more of the complete performance on, or was this fine for you? Were you just happy to get the seven songs that they gave to you? Um, and if not, if you didn't get this, are you still looking for it? Um, or is it just gonna be a hard pass for you? Let me know in the comments, let's have a conversation. Uh, be sure to give me a like, and of course subscribe and hit that notification so you can see more videos which will be on the way soon. Thanks everybody.